boxing truth here. Wanted to talk a little bit about Andre SOG Ward as his team, Rock Nation, HBO, are trying to finalize his next fight for July 30th in order to get one more interim fight before he takes on the daring task of fighting Sergey Kovalev for his three straps, as Kovalev is also taking an interim fight against Isaac Chalemba. But news reported about a week ago that perhaps Andre Ward was going to take on Kovalev leftovers and Nathan Cleverly, an opponent that would have been suitable for Ward, also a, an opponent that would have been would have been good enough for me. I would have been I would have been okay with that fight. I wouldn't have had no problem with that with that fight. Yeah, it's Kovalev leftovers, but you know Cleverly's a former world champion. He's fought world class opposition. He was in a recently good fight against Andre Fonfara, a very competitive fight where a bunch of punches were thrown and a bunch of punches were landed. So I didn't mind that fight at all. But according to Dan Raphael, and also according to Eddie Hearn in a recent interview with Coogan Cassius, that fight's not on the table no longer for Andre Ward. As uh, according to Eddie Hearn, the Ward team reached out and Matt Room and Eddie Hearn were, were expressed interest. They were in discussions. But Eddie Hearn and the and Rock Nation couldn't come up with the the, mon- the type of money for, for both Ward and, and Nathan Cleverly in order to, for all the parties to be satisfied in order to take the fight. So Rock Nation has since went quiet about discussions for a Cleverly Ward fight. So Eddie Hearn has decided to move on as the dialogue is is diminishing. There's no there's no more dialogue. There's no talks. Rock Nation is being very quiet. So Eddie Hearn has to move on. And right now, most likely, Nathan Clever is going to fight Jurgen Bragmer, who is a regular champion for the WBA, for some time in September. I believe September 17. And it's according to Eddie Hearn that it looks like Nathan Cleverly will not be, most likely will not be the next opponent for Andre Ward. So it leaves Andre Ward in a tough situation. He doesn't have any quality pool of opponents to fight for his July 30th date on HBO. It's going to be a, another high TV license fee HBO is going to have to provide as they have to promote this fight in order to build the Kovalev fight as big as they can be in order to get decent pay-per-view numbers. So HBO might have to take a hit as the, the other opponents being discussed is not very desirable to the boxing public nor HBO in particular names like Alexander Brand was against brought up an opponent Andre Ward tried to fight on the undercard of Cotto Canelo in which he eventually pulled out according to allegedly I mean according to reports and into Ward that you know it was, it was knee inflammation but who knows so he's been brought up back into the into the list of names being discussed for Ward's next opponent. And it's just, he's a super middleweight, 39 years old. He's fought no one at the world-class level. He's done nothing of significance, irrelevant. Not the type of fight, if I'm part of Team Ward, that I would want in preparation towards a Sergey Kovalev fight. Another name that was also discussed was a Swedish fighter, undefeated guy, 25 years old. He has not had not done anything notable in his career. He's undefeated but hasn't really fought the type of opponents. There's, he's fought mostly in Sweden and, and Denmark. Is there any world-class fighters at the moment from those countries? I don't think so. He's been fighting mostly in those two areas. He's also has no significant wins. The only notable win on his on his resume is a fighter is a very shot in over-the-hill Glenn Johnson who he dis, he decision in 10 rounds. So that's, I think his name is Eric Sekulin from Sweden, Sweden, and a, a, who was undefeated. And I think he's rated in the top 20. Not really sure, but just not the type of opponent HBO would want, not the type of opponent Team Ward would want in preparation for a Sergey Kovalev fight. I mean, these are not world beaters. These are not even a legit light heavyweights in in the case of Alexander Brandt. So Andre Ward may may perhaps be doomed as 
he's not going to be ready for Kovalev if he's fighting these type of opponents. Prospects. Sullivan Barrera, yeah, people are going to throw, oh, he was number one rated by the, by the, the IBF. Man, I don't give a fuck. You can't. You really going to throw a sanctioning body rating at me? Especially the IBS ratings, which has pretty much the weakest rating system of all the sanctioning bodies. I mean, there's been trash number one contenders for the IBF, like Kevin Bizier, Jojo Dan, or freaking uh, Dominic Wade was the highest ranked available contender for Golovkin's IBF strap. So don't throw that IBF rating, at, sanctioning body rating at me because they're the weakest out of all the sanctioning bodies. They have to really go over their ratings and, and do a second look because it's very weak in some of the some of the divisions. But, you know, Ward, you know, according to his trainer, uh, Virgil Hunter, who's not really been, been much likable these days, with some of the comments he's making, also demanding that Canelo fight Golovkin at right after Canelo knocked the fuck out of his fighter in Amir Khan, stating that Andre Ward was forced to move up by HBO. I mean, you really expect me to believe that? That he was forced by HBO to move up and wait? Andre Ward could have do, do, do what, he could have did whatever the fuck he wanted. He moved up for two reasons, in my opinion. One, he can't make the super mid- middleweight limit no more. If if he could, he wouldn't have fought Paul Smith at a catchweight at a 172, who himself is no light heavyweight, Paul Smith. He could have fought a super middleweight. He, he could have stayed at that weight and fought some guys, but he decided not to because he was boxed out. A lot of the uh, guys in super middleweight with straps have are with Heyman. Rock Nation and Heyman don't do business. They haven't done any business ever since Rock Nation's been in the boxing game. So that's out of the question. He can't fight uh, James DeGale. He can't fight, uh, what's his name, Badu Jack. They're, all, they're associated with Heyman. They're, they're practically doing in-house fights. So, but there was other opponents Ward could have fought at Super Middleweight if he really wanted to stay there. He could have fought Zoto Ramirez. He could have fought a- Offer Abraham in a rematch. But he decided to go for bigger game. And I don't blame him. There was really no recognizable names he could fight for big money fights at 168. So he decided to go to 75 simply because it's safer for him to make that weight now since he, he balloons up, up to, to the late 180s on fight night. Prior to, after his weigh-ins now. The guy weighed in at 186 for his last fight against Sullivan Barrera on fight night. So I really believe his super middleweight days are gone. He simply just can't boil down to that weight anymore. And also, there's a bigger fish, especially on his side of the pond, on his side of the street, in Sergey Kovalev, in, a, in probably in what is his, his biggest money fight out there, outside of a Triple G fight, Kovalev is the biggest fight out there for Andre Ward. So it only makes sense that he moved up simply because he couldn't make 68. Also because there was a big money fight on the table with Sergey Kovalev that needed to be built up and also will be a p- potential first pay-per-view fight for Andre Ward in his career. So I don't blame Andre Ward for moving up. He, he did it because he can't make weight and also because there, there's a bigger payday in that division, where there's a, a a triple unified champion in Sergey Kovalev, who fights on the same network as he does, so it only makes sense that Andre Ward moved up. There was no big fights to be made at 68. He was boxed out with some of the politics with featuring Heyman clients. Zoda Ramirez wasn't a champion yet. Offer Abraham rematch wasn't that desirable, so he went for a bigger money fight a, to build it up against Sergey Kovalev. But right now, when you look at what Ward's team is doing and in terms of opponents, he's not fighting the type of guys that is going to get him ready for Kovalev. He may, he may never be ready for Kovalev, but right from the, the Andre Ward that I saw against Sullivan Barrera, that, that war is not going to beat Kovalev. It, it ain't going to happen. I mean... I mean, Kovalev can box too. He, he's got the technical capabilities of able to get inside and land on Andre Ward. 
He's also very lanky. Very, he's very, he's an outside, a terrific outside puncher from distance, long arms, can knock you out with jabs, laser-like punches. It's going to be very interesting to see if this fight goes down, how Andre Ward's going to be able to deal with that. And considering the opponents that are being discussed for his next fight, they're complete showcases. They're not the type of opponents that's going to get him ready for a Sergey Kovalev. I don't know, man. I mean, I was hoping... I mean, I had to see a lot more from, from Andre Ward's next fight. I need to see the type of level he was showing in 2011, 2010. He hasn't shown that he's the same fighter in his last two fights. All you got to do is is go on YouTube and and look at his... And look at this video. It's a, it's a great video where they show every one of his fights and they show his progression. You see him from a prospect, a raw prospect, to a, a, an up-and-coming prospect, to a contender, and then to finally a champion. And you see the progression of levels in each fight. You see the improvement. And then watch the Paul Smith fight. And you'll see a comp- uh, his physicality is different. His, his physical appearance is different. He's not as fluid. He looks slower. He looks bigger, a lot bigger than, than his, than compared to his fights in 2013 and, and uh, 2012. He looks like a, a completely different fighter from the level he was showing in 2011, 2012, 2013. So I need to see a lot more from Andre Ward. He's not fully back there yet, still shaking off the rust, which is why he's taking these tune-up fights in order to get as ready as he can be for Sergey Kovalev. And, you know... Ward is not getting the same type of heat for for marinating his fight with Kovalev because deep down, even Ward's fanboys know that he ain't ready for that work and most likely will get chinned and flattened. But I need to see more for, from Andre Ward his next fight for me for me even to say it's a competitive fight, a fifty fifty fight right now. Because right now I don't I don't see it being a fifty fifty fight right now. I see it right now seventy thirty in Kovalev's favor. Based on Ward's last performance against Sullivan Barrera, which was a little disappointing. I thought he won the fight, but I didn't see any... I wasn't wild. And I didn't see a guy that can beat Sergey Kovalev. But hopefully someone else comes to the table. A, a better fighter, a, a better name opponent for Ward's next fight. As he's going to need the, the best preparation as possible to get, be ready for this monster and Sergey Kovalev. But right now... With the way Ward's looking in his last two fights, with the with the pr- prospective opponents that's being mentioned for his next fight, Andre Ward seems doomed and on the verge of getting knocked the fuck out by Sergey Kovalev. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.